Joe Rogan has built a reputation as a truth seeker who isn't afraid to shed light on dark corners of society. Therefore, it's no shock that he's reportedly unveiling the hidden truths behind the celebrities featured in Diddy's controversial footage, corroborating claims that Jaguar Wright has previously made. Saying all of this Diddy commotion isn't what we should be focused on. Like, it's just a distraction. I'm gonna tell you who I, I believe. It's on the tape. I believe Barack Obama got a tape. Yeah, he playing hide the hot dog. I know Jennifer Lopez has multiple tapes. Oh, yeah. I know Beyonce got a tape. I definitely know they probably recycled some old Stevie J and Eve stuff. Mm -hmm. I know Drake got a tape. I know Rihanna got a tape. I know Chris Brown's on one of them mm -hmm. tapes. I know Trey Songz has been like, a supporting actor in many freak off films. Um, definitely Usher. I think what was shock people are the politicians um, and the royals that oh, were yeah. on that tape. And I'm still trying to figure out when Harry and Meghan are going to be honest yeah. about their freak off tape. Yeah. Um, I I don't think anybody really wants to talk about the fact that the royal family had many time at Ditty Party, especially that weird old uncle. Let's kick things off with a significant figure, Kim Porter. Y'all don't be listening, but I hear it. But she said that first. Saying. But she said that first, though. When she said Kim Porter was the real puff. Nobody's nobody's listening. Nobody's hearing it. Or like, that's not my business. My business is little Hollywood. Diddy has denied these charges and pleaded not guilty in U.S. District Court. Additionally, reports have emerged of Diddy exhibiting abusive behavior toward his ex-partners. One incident allegedly captured on video shows him hitting Cassie while she was wrapped in just a towel raising questions about Jennifer Lopez's relationship with him from 1999 to 2001. Such Knight suggested that this footage may have contributed to the tensions between Affleck and Lopez. In March 2024, Diddy's homes in Florida and California came out with a new album, man, called Love, and he got a song on there called Kim Porter. How you feel about that? I think that's probably a great thing to do. You know what I'm saying? To honor the person that you said you love. To honor the woman who <laughs> gave you a scar on your wrist for the rest of your life that you could always look at <laughs> and remember. You know what I'm saying? So if he put that song out there too, I guess he wanted to honor her. But he gonna always remember her. Kim was who Kim was. And then if he ever tried to forget her, all he had to do is look at his wrist. What you mean by that when you say that, you know, Kim Porter gave Puffy a scar? When they, uh, when they were at, at home, at Kim's house on 110th Street, he wanted to, you know, put his hands on her in the wrong way. And Kim took one of those court screws and ripped his wrist up and hit an artery. And when she did that, he had to rush over to St. Luke's Hospital. I met him over there to the hospital. It was me, him, and Kim in the hospital when he was bleeding like crazy. And uh, that's that was the beginning of him. And that's the first thing I knew about people getting hooked on opioid, opioids. You know what I'm saying? And that was from that accident. Oh, that was from the incident with him and Kim when she wasn't taking that, she wasn't gonna take that ass whooping and she got him off of him the best way she could. Right, right, from your point of view, right, how would you describe Puffy and Kim Porter relationship when you was around? Oh, it was volatile. It, it, it was like, you know, damn it she do, damn it she don't. Like Kim could not be with nobody else and he knew it. And he could do whatever he wanted to. You know what I'm saying? And uh, even when he was with J-Lo, like we'll put J-Lo in the house and he'll call and Kim wouldn't answer. And if she was out, 
he would ask the babysitter, you know, do you know where she at? Well, she said she was gonna be here because she had Christian at the time. You know what I mean? So now we go on where Kim is at. And if she was with somebody, he made it very uncomfortable for that person to be with. Using the bodyguard. What she mean by that? Like if we was there, you know, you're not gonna be sitting up there, you know, and he pushing up on Kim, you're not gonna do nothing to him while we there, or you're not gonna say nothing to him while we there. Dude would just either step out or step away, or Kim would just get in another car and go or whatever. Right, but from the outside looking in, right, from my point of view, it does look like he, you know, is living with a regret when it comes to her. My man coulda, woulda, shoulda, all that look good for the media. Which include recent arrests on sex trafficking and racketeering charges. He has denied allegations regarding his allegedly controlling behavior. These developments echo the claims made by his ex-girlfriend Cassie, who filed a sexual abuse lawsuit against him in 2023. This situation has reignited speculation about the dynamics of his relationship with Porter, who tragically passed away in 2018. Porter, we all know about the time that she cut Diddy with a court screw. Do you recall any other time that her and Diddy got into it? Well, I could hear it in the suite, in the hotel suite. And then sometimes when I went, when, he, when Kim lived on 70 and something street, and I would go upstairs with Diddy, you could hear it in the hallway. And I would just shake my head when he come out or whatever, and Kim would be in the house. And it's always about where she was at or who she was dealing with. You know what I mean? So, uh, I'm not gonna see you physically put your hands on nobody. I don't give a who you are. Or what. I'm not gonna see you physically put your hands on her. You understand? I'm not gonna, that's not gonna be me. You know, first of all, I can't. The position I was in, you understand? Investigator for child abuse. Worked for elite investigations. New York State parole officer. I mandated to do something. You understand? I'm mandated to do something. If she says, yo, his bodyguard was right there, but I'm still moonlighting, I'm moonlighting his bodyguard, I'm, I'm working at his bodyguard, but I still had that other function as a state officer. I'm mandated to do something. Crazy, man. So you could hear Diddy putting hands on Kim Porter. Well, what, 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 see, he always do, like I told you, he'd be doing that. He'll start off, he'll have something on his mind, and he'll like that play fight with him. You understand? And he, he'll be hurting them when they, to the point where they'll be like, yo, stop, stop. You know what I'm saying? But you know, they got the room is locked. You don't hear none of that. And then, you know, Kim will walk out. in her white robe, and you can see it in her face. But what are you gonna do? Right, right, I always wanted to ask you this, man. Do you know anything about these after parties that Diddy be having? Which after parties? There's a lot of after parties. There's a lot of after parties for a lot of different reasons. There's after parties, if we doing it at the hotel after we do a party, or there's after parties after the after party. You understand? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I guess the um the one people talk about is the after after party. Well, those will be when him and somebody that he needs something from or wants something from, and he'll get those girls and he'll line them up with him. Diddy and Kim Porter were in a relationship for 13 years, from 1994 to 2007, during which they had twin daughters, Delila and Jesse, as well as two sons, Christian and Quincy Brown, the latter of whom Diddy adopted from Kim's previous relationship with ALB. As investigations into Diddy's behavior unfold, there are growing concerns about whether Kim endured similar treatment during their time together. 
An insider who worked closely with both Diddy and Kim provided troubling insights in an interview with Hot 97, shedding light on Diddy's controlling nature. They recounted a specific incident before the 2003 MTV Awards, stating, I remember how controlling he was over her. He's at least one or two steps ahead. She knew how it, she knew how it worked. She just miscalculated at the end. Mm -hmm. Miscalculated to the level in which he'd go or, or? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think for her, she thought not even he mm -hmm. would be willing to do that. You know, especially in the way he did it. Right. Um, I I'm still surprised that people have the ability to question it when her casket was pre-ordered. Wow. I didn't know that. Like that fact in detail, people keep forgetting to mention. She had her casket ready three weeks before she died. Custom. Wow. He refused to leave for the show until Kim's hair looked exactly how he wanted it. He was fixated on one curl, saying, we're not leaving until this curl is right. It was a small detail, but his control over her was unmistakable. The insider also detailed a violent incident at an Atlanta nightclub, recalling a fight where Diddy struck Kim with a bottle. She threw one back at him, I remember thinking, wow, she's standing up for herself. But Diddy turned to me and said, we're just two people who love each other. It's been a rumor for a while now that, you know, she got killed because she was exposing a lot of stuff in her book. Is there any truth to that? Unless they can hide some, uh, unless she did her book on Google Duel and it's in the clouds, and they could get somebody to get it out of there. She ain't got no book. It's just a conspiracy. Kim, it was alleged that she did have a book and that her book was about to come out. And she was talking about all the perils, everything that she went through in the music business and with Diddy. All the men that they slept with together, because there were men that they slept with together. There were swinging times that they slept with together. I don't know, man. How do you put your girl through something like that? Or how do you look at your girl and knowing that she Sex and another dude. What were your what kind of demonic mind you have to have to be that far gone where that shit don't bother you for somebody that you love? But Kim Book was going to express all that. And I hope she did her book on Google Docs or she did a book somewhere that is floating in the cloud of the internet that somebody could go get it one day. Cause anything, any picture you take, anything that you write or say, it's in that, it's in that internet cloud. It just gotta be, you just gotta go get it. And one day, somebody gonna go get it. But I'm sure I'm sure that he probably got hold to those tablets or whatever she had, allegedly, and got rid of them. They swimming with the fishes. Wow, man. So she was about to expose all that in her book, them sleeping with men together. She was going to expose everything. I heard it was tell all. 
yeah, that's crazy, man. Just curious, right? Did you know that Diddy and Kim had that type of relationship back then in real time? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because I know somebody personally that lives in Atlanta that was swinging with them. And I would never mention his name because he's a good brother and he knows my family down there. You know, he knows my family down there. And uh, I would never you know, put his name out there like that. You know, he's been in the music business. He didn't put a lot of groups, uh, I mean, A-listed groups out there, especially A-listed groups from Atlanta. So I would never put his name out there like that. But, oh, uh, you know, when, you know, I, 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 I got the key, I got the pass key to everything. But then when, you know, they needed more ice or they needed, bottles and stuff like that when I used to go to the door and I knock on the door and they open the door and then you know my nosy ass whoa <laughs> you see certain sh or sitting at, they sitting in the jacuzzi together all of them nothing on I really believe is that they might got into a little spat a little fight or something went down and, and, and Puff did that play fighting stuff that he always do and that pillow fighting stuff and probably smothered her. But I wouldn't say that on the air. I wouldn't let people know that he probably smothered her to death and because she had a bad cold or she felt some kind of way that uh, she she died doing them having that play fight with the pillow fights and everything and smothered her. But I'm not gonna say nothing like that on, on the program because I don't wanna get myself in trouble. As far as saying that with him and say, oh, he said this and he said that. Nah, I'm just, I'm just being facetious. I'm just being sarcastic that if, you know, and, and, and those type of rams and those type of things, because I'm not, I'm never gonna say that he probably smothered her to death. I wouldn't do that. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, they rush to do a, uh, 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 the coroner come in and say, yo, yo, she had a back, she had pneumonia, she died of pneumonia, but nobody did no autopsy or nothing like that. Get out of here. Have a funeral, put in a gold casket. It takes what, two months to get those gold casts? Had it within a week? Oh, you're a millionaire, I guess you can. You're a multimillionaire, you can get it that quick. Then had somebody at the funeral home, had somebody at the funeral, had a bodyguard at the funeral home watching the dead body for 24 hours up until the funeral. The insider also revealed troubling details about Diddy's treatment of Kim following one of their breakups. According to the source, Diddy moved Kim into an apartment on the Upper West Side that was reportedly in disrepair. She recounted that the place was infested with rats. She came home one day to find rat droppings in her boots and realized she needed to leave, the insider noted. Additionally, Kim Porter's former husband, Al B. Shore, has expressed concerns regarding her death. He recently published a book titled Asterisk Kim's Lost Words, a journey for justice from the other side asterisk, which was released on Amazon just a week before Diddy's arrest. The book allegedly contains information that Porter saved on a flash drive, which she shared with friends prior to her sudden passing in 2018 from Lobar Pneumonia. His PR team, the smartest thing for you to do would be create your own version of the Kim Porter book. And make sure it gets pushed out there first, so anything that comes after will always be held in question. It's brilliant. Yeah. It's great spin. Yeah. Get his version out before the real version come out. Y'all better believe everything that I'll be sure says. It's about to get disgusting. See, this is the thing. Kim's official book was never sent out to anybody in, in complete form. See, this is T. How I know that the book 
isn't completely reputable. Mm. I know that there's a lot of truth in that book, but it is spin and it is brilliant spin mm. and it is juicy spin. And I'm going to show y'all the value of what understanding how to spin narratives can change Julie's mind. Yeah. The insider also revealed troubling details about Diddy's treatment of Kim following one of their breakups. According to the source, Diddy moved Kim into an apartment on the Upper West Side that was reportedly in disrepair. She recounted that the place was infested with rats. What I had to do was marry a white boy, uh, you know, Oscar winner, for people to stop remembering that she had a gun in her pocketbook. She had gunshot residue on her hands the night that Natanya was, was shot at that club. For all we know, that bullet came from the gun that was in her hand. And not once has she spoken up for the betterment of that woman. Not once has she donated to her family or for her medical bills that she's still paying or say something in her defense to stop Puffy from gaslighting her and trying to put hits out on her because he was afraid that maybe one day they would open the case and she still has the bullet fragments in her face like J-Lo has said nothing. Nothing. You, you really thought that just running off and marrying Ben Affleck it was was going to take you out of the, the Diddy downfall? Jennifer Lopez. When she's Lopez. finally held accountable for the part she played in the harm that was put on the Tanya Rubin's life. Do you think they'll bring up charges on Jennifer Lopez? They better. She committed perjury. And the attorney that was representing the defense side of that suborned perjury Last time I checked, there's no statute of limitation on perjury. We can start there. Let's bring Jenny to the cell block. She's been to every other block. Sometimes they'll open up a case to bring light on other cases. Do you feel the shine, uh, the club uh, night with him and Jenny, Jennifer Lopez will come back to light? Oh, absolutely, it has to. It has to. If it was good enough to be content or law and order for what? The 12th season, episode nine? She came home one day to find rat droppings in her boots and realized she needed to leave. The insider noted. Additionally, Kim Porter's former husband, Al B. Shore has expressed concerns regarding her death. He recently published a book titled Asterisk, Kim's Lost Words. A Journey for Justice from the Other Side Asterisk, which was released on Amazon just a week before Diddy's arrest. The book allegedly contains information that Porter saved on a flash drive, which she shared with friends prior to her sudden passing in 2018 from low bar pneumonia. To deliberations, the jury now appears to be focusing on the gun possession and bribery charges against Sean Puffy Combs. This afternoon, jurors sent the judge two notes, one of which asked for a transcript of a phone message Combs left Wardell Fenderson, once his driver, now the prosecution's star witness. During the trial, Fenderson testified that Combs was armed the night of the shooting at Club New York and later pressured him to claim ownership of a pistol police found when they pulled over Combs' Lincoln Navigator as it fled the shooting. And I just want to make you feel like comfortable, you know what I'm saying? Make your family feel comfortable. What exactly Combs meant by that is in dispute, but the prosecution claims the rapper offered Fenderson $50,000 or a diamond ring to take the rap for the gun. The jurors also wanted to hear a readback of testimony relating to Combs' former girlfriend, actress singer Jennifer Lopez who was in the Navigator when it was stopped by police. An officer testified that everyone in the SUV was ordered to put their hands on the vehicle. But Lopez walked away, saying she was going home. 
As she was being detained, a gun was discovered in the vehicle. At that point, a sergeant on the scene ordered everyone who was in the vehicle under arrest. The officer quotes Lopez as saying, it's not my... Believes there may be something more sinister behind this narrative. If you were to delve deeper, it might reveal unsettling connections that go beyond what's currently being reported. They're separate lawyers and everything went on Sean because Diddy found the witness against Sean and brought him forward. So I guess, I, I guess that's how you do your man when you don't want to go to jail. That's what happened, bro. Sean said it in the whole interview. On that documentary that Sean did from jail, he spoke about that, but he, he forgave him. If that was you, would you forgive him? Man, I wouldn't, bro. I'm not into forgiving. That's for, the, that's, that's for Christ. Even more troubling is the implication that in the wake of Kim Porter's death, Jennifer Lopes may have played a role in protecting Diddy and assisting him in evading accountability. This adds a chilling layer to an already complex and distressing situation. When I was an 18-year-old kid, um, you know, just wanting to do nothing other than make my mother proud and make Belize proud and um, do what all of us want to do, be recognized for our talent and uh, take over the world. Uh, I was defending him and he turned around and called witnesses to testify against me and he contributed, he pretty much sent me to prison. So that is the context by which you must always describe that relationship. Yes, I forgave, I moved on, but let us not pretend as if I was in Miami for Thanksgiving and Christmas well, I and that... I, I saw birthday cake. went again to do a charity event for impoverished youth uh, in London. Um, so let us not lose sight of what the cold hard facts are. This was not someone uh, who I vacationed with and who he and I enjoyed this great intimate relationship of brotherhood. This is someone who destroyed my life and who I forgave and who I moved on and for the better interest of Belize uh, because he was in a position at that time to give scholarships and to maybe invest. Um, I would not uh, deny uh, attempting to bring the investment to Belize and to bring the contributions to education to Belize. But don't distort it as if, you know, he and I were boom ballet. Uh, this is someone that destroyed my life. In December 1999, Diddy, Jennifer Lopez, and his bad boy records artist Moses, Shine Barrow, were entangled in a nightclub shooting in New York City. Following the incident, both Jennifer and Diddy were arrested and spent approximately 14 to 15 hours in jail after authorities discovered a stolen gun in the vehicle they used to escape the scene. Watch them both fire their guns. I watched them. I got hit right here in my nose in between my eyes, which means I'm facing directly at you. Just like I'm looking at you and I can tell you got on black shades, they kind of look like gazelles and an Adidas shirt. That's exactly how I was looking at him. And I watched him shoot me. The first thing I said when the bullet hit me, and, and listen, when right before the muzzle flash went off, when I had turned back to look, I heard God's voice say, relax, you are about to get hit, calm down. And when I screamed, no, pop, pop, and it hit me dead in my face. And I never passed out, I never fell, I never cried, I never, everybody started running and just like when you watch. Jennifer was swiftly released and cleared of all charges, while Diddy and Shine faced gun possession charges. Although Diddy was acquitted, Shine was convicted on five counts. In 2001, Shine was found not guilty of attempted murder, but received a 10-year prison sentence and was later deported to Belize upon his release. At the time, there was widespread speculation that Shine had been framed for the shooting. When they go raid Puppy's house, and they get all these videos of J-Lo doing this and J-Lo doing that, and they know the fact that J-Lo lied 
and he said that the gun was shined or whatever and sick that man to prison and destroyed his life and she knew it was coming. I'm quite sure they probably called that the FBI gave the effect and the curse he called it being after that. It's a white man who got respect in the white world. I'm quite sure they said, we want to show you some things. It's about your wife. And when he see this that her and Puffy were doing and who they were doing it with, I'm quite sure, they gave it back those tapes. And I'm quite sure he can never look at her the same. I'm quite sure they had for a divorce. In fact, this case is so clear-cut that it includes a victim who continues to allege wrongdoing by Diddy, yet he has somehow managed to evade justice. And was asked whether he thought Jay-Z was involved in the scandal. Dash responded with this. The fact that he's just in a lot of pictures and he's over there a lot, objectively, you kind of have to wonder. It's, it's kind of hard not to. You know, like for me, it's a little different because, you know, I once knew him, not in about, you know, 20 years. And, you know, I know Puff. So it's like the stuff that I'm hearing, like even the stuff that's already been admitted, like, you know, the pause, the freak off parties. It's like shocking to me the reality of that, that that was going on and I didn't know. So right in this moment, like almost anything is, is possible. Like, like I would hear certain rumors and they were just too far-fetched to me. But the things that, the accusations that are being made, um, they're beyond the stuff that I was even hearing about. So again, I would hope that uh, he doesn't and was not involved in any of these things, just regardless to whether they were illegal or not, just morally, you know, it would be shocking to me and I'm sure to the rest of the world if uh, he gets caught up in that. But the way they're painting this picture on TikTok and virally and, you know, a lot of the things that are being said often, it's hard not to trigger uh, suspicion. Dash expressed his surprise. Such Knight has claimed that Ben Affleck left Jennifer Lopez after seeing footage of her from her relationship with Diddy, who has recently faced numerous allegations of emotional, physical, and sexual abuse. Around 120 individuals have come forward with accusations against Diddy, including claims of coercion into sexual acts. 